Hi, Michael here. We'll be going over classes in Gears Tactics today, and this will be a comprehensive uh, video which covers the tier list of classes, the tier list of subclasses as well. So we have uh, quite lots of stuff actually that will probably be useful to you. Uh, just remember, we're going for 1K subs, so if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And also, just remember to comment and to discuss the video. You can always just like or dislike it as well. To let me know what you think. This list is going to be quite subjective because this is my own personal opinion. We'll be focusing on insane difficulty though, so uh, we'll have to kind of disregard all uh, the lower difficulties for this uh, very reason because they are very different in how uh, the game is played. Uh, the major difference is that everything one-shots you on Insane, basically, so several defensive options that especially support class has are just invalidated by that. So we'll just go over all the classes and we'll kind of try to talk and discuss and figure out which of the classes is the best, um, perhaps most useful, and so on and so forth. Now, this tier list focuses on the versatility of classes. So I just picked the ones that I think uh, are the most universal, so they fit for most of the possible scenarios. Okay, so let's get started with the uh, class uh, tier list, actually. So we'll just have a look at this one second. I'm going to pull it up on the screen, and here we go. So as far as I uh, am concerned, the best class in the game is definitely support by far. This is because every single composition we'll be running basically requires you to have a strong support. And there is only one build that really works, in my opinion, so I'll just show you uh, the build in a few minutes once we're done discussing all the classes. But generally speaking, uh, you can uh, supports are very AP efficient. They can give other classes two action points for the cost of one, and they have 20 damage uh, bonus uh, kind of connected to this uh, particular buff as well. They have 50% damage and full reload on important turns, which is also very very good because this is basically like a free action that you would have spent reloading and also 50% bonus damage on top of that. And that's a huge, huge bonus, right? It's a huge buff for every single character on the team. And then finally, uh, you can also uh, get this special skill that rewinds your cooldowns and this is basically allowing you to do all those things that we have here twice. So that's extremely, uh, extremely strong. Then we have a lot of A-tier classes, so we have the Sniper and the Scout. I think Sniper is um, like a notch above, uh, above the Scout. I wouldn't put Scout in B-tier though, but because the class is extremely versatile as well. But Generally speaking, Sniper is powerful, safe, accurate, those are really strong things for Insane because, you know, you'll be uh, probably trying to stay as safe as possible, we'll be trying to eliminate the enemies from the distance. You'll also have, like a lot of priority targets that can one-shot you, and Sniper can just really easily deal with those. Okay, we have High Christians then. <laughs> They're very useful from high ground, they don't need high ground to be efficient though. Um, they are very risk averse as well, so generally speaking, that's a very huge, very large uh, factor. And then finally, you also have uh, those uh, kills granting AP refunds, reloads, and more refunds, and full action resets. So it's like a lot of stuff, like there are a lot of abilities on the sniper tree that are just making this class extremely useful. Um, and then we have Scout. Scout is quite the opposite of, of what Sniper is, because Scout is quite unsafe actually, uh, because you have to move in and make some risky calls. But you have some tools to alleviate that. You have Cloak, so you can go invisible after you're done with you know killing several enemies on the same turn. Um, Scout has very good AP economy as well with certain builds. It can approach uh, you know covered enemies safely, get those kills, go through pass overwatch, eliminate those priority targets, and just go invisible and run away the next turn. So generally speaking, scouts are very very strong, but they I think they take a lot more planning, a lot more skill to you to, to be used kind of efficiently, right? I tried two builds of scout um, so far, maybe three actually three. I didn't like the first two. The third one though is is really nice. I'll kind of talk about those builds. Uh, in a while. I'm also testing the fourth build right now. It's pretty good as well, but I think you can you can kind of make some alterations there. Now we have the uh, B tier classes. They are B tier specifically because they're like way less versatile than the other three. Uh, this means that they're very situational in their uses, um, and obviously uh, they're very strong still, but they don't really have that much of a purpose compared to the other uh, three. So Vanguard number one. Vanguard is very good for uh, breaking Overwatch, covering, uh, removing cover of shouts. Uh, it's tanky, it has some support skills, but it's not really like as good as support at what it does. 
the nice thing is that you can actually taunt enemies, you can actually disable enemies in a sense, because you force them to attack you and they have reduced damage, so you can kind of take some target fire and probably survive this even on insane. So, um, then Vanguard also has this ability to go melee with very, very strong bayonet charge ability, which is, you know, very high range, uh, allows you to basically kill an enemy, regain an action point and go back. The problem is that later on in the game, there are a lot of enemies that just explode on death. And this means that, you know, this skill is just not as useful as it would normally have been. Uh, so it kind of falls off, right? So there's another uh, huge disadvantage of Vanguard. Then I have Heavy. Heavy was my favorite class at the very start of the game because it has this ridiculous amount of damage, it has very strong overwatch, um, it can hold your ground very well. So if you have like all those missions that rely on uh, you know, holding certain positions, defending points, uh, capturing the points, this, this class is going to pay dividends because it just has so many defensive skills. However, in the offensive, if you have, I'm sorry, you have to move around the map a lot. If you have the, the missions that kind of require you to, you know, take points, free some captives, this class is virtually useless. Uh, so even though it has high damage, very high ammo count, very high overwatch value, but it, it still doesn't quite do as much as the other four, really. I think the, uh, Heavy is definitely like the odd one out, or in those hold uh, the point missions, it's extremely useful, extremely strong, but outside of it, it's kind of meh. I mean, you can try the AoE build, because the, there is like this AoE build, AoE build which uh, relies on exploding enemies and doing like a lot of op like area of effect damage, uh, but the problem is accuracy still, like accuracy is kind of bad on heavies and there is no real like efficient way of alleviating that. So I would say they are definitely like in the B tier. They have accuracy buffs in their tree, but this doesn't quite, uh, you know, they, in order to match the efficiency of other classes, they basically have to use accuracy buffs, right? So uh, that's not, not that great. But on the other hand, they have the accuracy buffs that they can give to the entire team. So they can increase the confidence with which we approach scenarios which is not bad. But then again, the accuracy uh, buff is range limited uh, and its range is actually fairly small. So again, um, that's the basic tier list for all the classes. And now we're just focused on the details and on the particular builds for each of them. Okay, so let's get started with our uh, favorite class. So we'll be, we'll be going basic from the top uh, of the list down. So we start with support, and then we'll just move on uh, to Sniper, Scout, Vanguard, and Heavy. Support. Support has one really strong, liable build. And I'll show you this in a second once I'm able to switch this on on my, on my uh, okay, here, here we go, on my computer. So, for support, uh, wait, this is Scout, sorry, that's my bad. Here we go with, uh, with support. So, the strongest ability and the strongest build for support is the Paragon build. Okay, this is SS plus tier. This is the strongest setup of skills in the game that I think exists overall. Uh, and let's just kind of, uh, then we have strat Strategist, which is actually weak on its own, but it has a, like this very useful ability, which allows you to reset your cooldowns. Uh, but, uh, you know, there is no point resetting your cooldowns when you don't have any useful skills on yourself. So you should probably go Paragon first, and then at level 6 you can reach Strategist. This should be your optimal build. Let's just go over the abilities that we have then. Okay, let's just go over the skills. <laughs> uh, by the way, we are disregarding Combat Medic and Surgeon because they're healing classes. And healing is useless on Insane because you're mostly, if you get shot once, you're mostly just dead. And if you get shot twice, you're just being very, very stupid, right? So um, honestly, I don't think these are useful. Um, now, there are certain abilities that allow you to resurrect your, and uh, not resurrect, but uh, kind of bring back your downed allies. And, you know, like, I think my, like, only got downed, like, once in, uh, over the course of the full campaign play. So if you get downed once, to like, this skill is just useless, right? Like, uh, usually you just are completely dead, right? So there's no way to resurrect the dead character in this game, which is kind of a shame. I guess this would make uh, support even stronger, like those trees would be useful then. But without that ability to resurrect dead allies, there's just one reliable build, but it's just so, so strong that you just have to use the support in every mission you can, I think. I, I actually think that if you are trying to go full meta, you could go to support, uh, and then you can just take, I don't know, double sniper, a sniper, and a scout, and this will be a very, very strong build as well. Okay, so as far as team composition goes, I think uh, I think you can actually try to 
incorporate double support, just you know, kick your Vanguard and see how it goes. Uh, I feel this is a very reliable thing to do as well. So let's just go over uh, all those abilities. So for support now, I'm just going to switch to the game now to show you the skills and what they do. So going, this is my Gabe support. He's almost, I mean, halfway level six. So he has a lot of useful skills here. The best skill in the game, I think, is Empower because this allows you to transfer action point to an ally. Uh, then uh, on uh, level, I think if you get to level, well, this is level uh, one, two. So it's like, I think it's going to be level uh, four. Level four allows you to unlock these two abilities. You should just go all the way this straight path and you have lock and load, which is the damage buff for entire team and the full reload for everybody and empower level three, which is 20% damage for your one turn. Uh, on top of two additional actions for your ally. So this is just a really, really strong action because it basically adds additional action point onto the battlefield, right? You pay one action point and you give two action points to your ally and you also uh, get 20% damage bonus, which is huge because your sniper, for instance, will then be able to finish off, uh, for instance, the weaker enemies that have 300 HP, such as ticks, right? This, this should mean that uh, your sniper just one shots the ticks. And there is one very important item for, uh, for this character, actually. When you have armor, uh, you can have this uh, commando vest that gives you potential. And potential means that it can reset a skill of your character, uh, you know, uh, by two turns, which means you basically reset your empower. Uh, you have a chance to reset your empower, which is, you know, obviously very, very strong. Um, then, uh, so this is a very, very useful item. As far as the tree goes, once you're done with this, uh, when you level, when you level five, you take these two points. Uh, this is obviously not that useful, but this is extremely useful. Uh, I mean, if you miss a, uh, if you miss or hit, this doesn't matter. This is good because if you miss or you hit, you reduce evasion of a target, right? So it means you can easily hit the target of other characters. That's very useful, uh, but that's not the key skill. This is the key skill surge. It refreshes all abilities. This means that you can use this, so you can empower, you can uh, lock and load, and you can surge, right? And actually, if you use these two, I think it's a good idea to just use surge straight away because your chest piece may renew the surge cooldown. Also, uh, if you use surge straight away, the cooldown, you know, if, you, if you use it uh, right away, the, generally, the general cooldown of the ability will go down to zero faster, right? So it's just a very, very good idea to just use these two and then instantaneously use surge as well. So it does a very, very strong combo. Uh, and this is it for the support, right? We are disregarding these because those are healing abilities. As I said, healing is garbage. Um, so. This is okay, uh, but it's not good enough, I feel. This is just not good enough for you to actually uh, actually invest into those trees, especially that these are just way, way stronger. You can play with this, like maybe with this tree because you have damage reduction and healing, if you are planning on taking your second support and you already have the surge. Uh, but I think this is generally speaking the most overpowered build in the entire game. Okay, we're moving out to the next class, which is going to be Sniper. And Sniper is actually still one of my favorite classes in the game as well. So let's just have a look at the Sniper uh, tree and let's look at the tier list. So for Snipers, I think Hunter is uh, probably the best uh, skill tree that is uh, in the game right now because it has a lot of AP resets. Basically, you have three abilities that grant you free AP on kills. And the final Ultimate Hunter ability is actually going to give you free action points if you use it when you're down to one AP uh, and you kill an enemy. So obviously they rely on you actually killing something, but you're executing those low uh, HP targets. You're just, you know, you'll be just getting those action points for free all the time over and over again. And then we have some other trees that I think are good. So uh, generally speaking, I think Assassin tree is very strong, but you need to have this to go Assassin. This is because you have this Headhunter ability here, and it is a stacking damage bonus that lasts for the entire combat scenario. And it gives you 3% for every single kill you take, and it's just a very, very strong ability. Then you have Stalker, and Stalker isn't that strong really. I don't like Stalker that much. I was playing with it a lot, but um, because one of the characters I had had this tree chosen, but I actually feel that these three abilities, so this uh, concussive shot, uh, it's strong, it disables one enemy, but it's just not uh, as good as just killing the enemy, right? So uh, then we have the Marksman. Marksman is a strong tree as well, but there's some RNG built in. So those abilities, this one is good because it does more damage uh, to enemies who are f on full HP. So it can basically double up on your damage. It has, it has a high cooldown, and honestly, there are better skills um, that you could be using. So I don't think this is optimal 
Uh, I feel this is a good tree, but uh, uh, like on insane, if you're trying to optimize your builds, I wouldn't go there. So just have a look at those abilities in detail and try to figure out what exactly you should be taking. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to switch to um, to gears now uh, so you can kind of have a look at those uh, abilities of those classes. So now we have Mikhaila uh, and Mikhaila has Hunter here. And this is very, very strong tree because obviously we have the resets, right? So. Uh, first of all, if you miss a skill per, once per turn, you reset a cooldown, which means that all those vital abilities that you're using uh, to finish off the kills, if they miss, if you get very unlucky, you get another use of them. That's actually like this RNG shield is a very powerful passive. <coughs> now, we have those abilities here. Uh, this is shoot, uh, and if the target is hit, this unit gets two action. So, you know, if you only hit, this is not even on kill, on hit, your, uh, your character gets a free double, like a free action point basically in here. So use one action point to gain one action point if you hit, and if you miss, you know, this cooldown resets, very good. Fast fingers, it's a f if you kill or down an enemy, it's a kill, I mean, it's a reload and an action point. So basically it's a free action if you kill or if you down enemies. Here, uh, if you move and then you shoot, your first shot actually gains, uh, no, uh, Actually, no, uh, like all your shots on a given turn gain additional damage. So basically just uh, movement doesn't kind of cripple you anymore. So using movement abilities uh, don't actually take away from your uh, from your action point pool because 50% damage means that if you shoot twice, you basically make up for the losses. And this is just a very strong skill as well if you're trying to spike down an enemy using the combo with the support skills that we have discussed already. And then we have ultimate shot. So if you down or kill, you get free action points back. So this is a very good idea to use this particular ability when you are uh, when you are down to one action point and you are about to kill, right? Because this means that you get free action points again and you can continue your rampage. So you can see how universal this tree is. This particular tree here, um, you have those concussion shots, which are okay because this is just an um, an uh, interrupt and disable for an entire turn, but it's not just doesn't compare to this tree at all. Uh, you have cooldowns, you have terrified, which is kind of bad because you just want to be killing, not disabling. And here, uh, I mean, this is a good like get out of the jail card. So you can cons you may consider just taking one concussion shot uh, level because this basically means that you can disable an enemy, like a Theron guard, for instance, that's just gunning for you, and you have like no way of dealing with him on a given turn, right? So it's a good ability uh, to disable enemies, but I don't think it validates just you know spending two points here. Now we have the assassin tree here. And Assassin Tree had, has Headhunter, which, as I, as I already said, is a stacking damage bonus, permanent stacking damage bonus for a given scenario. And since you're killing a lot of enemies with, uh, with your um, Sniper, it's just a very, very strong skill if you can get to it. And then finally, um, so this is um, the, uh, the Precision Shot is strong because it's a 2 AP ability, but it kind of guarantees that it hits. So if you really want to make sure, like if, if it's like, uh, you know, kill or die situ situation for you, you can use the precision shot as a huge damage bonus as well, so it's probably just you know, going to secure some kills for you. So it's kind of, again, removing some RNG from the fight. Um, here, it's a strong ability, but it's just not as strong as the others, right? We have the uh, first blood ability, which is okay, but doesn't quite validate uh, taking this tree, really. Uh, basically just more damage when enemy is low HP, in, in, when enemy is full HP. And then there is like an RNG here, uh, which means that if you kill an enemy with crit, 25% chance you get uh, two actions back. However, it has to be a kill with crit, right? So the conditions for this are extremely narrow. I actually had this one specced before. It proc'd like once over the course of four scenarios. So I think like this looks very interesting, but in practice, it's kind of shitty, okay? Uh, and this this is basically uh, a, um, again, crit means uh, you get plus one ammo, but uh, I think there are just better choices on the tree, more efficient choices on the tree for insane difficulty, so I'd never be taking this. Okay, moving on to the uh, scout. And scout is very interesting, actually, because scout has a lot of choices. Scout is the, like has the most interesting tree of all the classes. I feel that raider is the strongest uh, uh, scout tree here, because it has like better AP economy, you can basically hurt yourself to do more, to allow yourself to um, to gain more action points, uh, and it's like very very versatile. <coughs> then I'm actually testing Recon right now, and Recon looks very interesting as well. Uh, so I'd say Recon is like 
second after Raider, and third after Raider is the Commando Tree, uh, because it's just a uh, kind of a safer play style, which allows you to plant mines around the battlefield. So let's just have a look at the abilities and, that, and the abilities that you, I think, should be taking. So we're just switching to Gears Tactics again. By the way, Slayer is kind of bad. I think Slayer looks good on paper, but honestly, it just doesn't do as much as the uh, as the Raider, especially. Raider is just a, an improved version of Slayer, so there is no reason to be taking both of those. So let's just have a look at the mechanics of those skills now. So we have my scout here. Um, right. And basically, I'm testing this one right now. So the idea here is that you take Cloak. Uh, cloak is very useful because it just allows you to hide, right? This is a free ability that every scout has. This one is useful because this means that Cloak is free, so you can Cloak and move. Uh, anticipation is strong because you basically like uh, are allowed to shift uh, your action points to the following turn. I wish there was Anticipation 3, but there's just two levels of it. But this basically allows you to kind of you know uh, plan ahead, and if you see that the next turn allows you to kind of get a lot of kills, you just pop your Anticipation and go. Now, Raider is very strong because it's, it has a lot of action economy, actually. So, um, first of all, uh, Exertion. Exertion is extremely powerful. So basically, you get three actions for the cost of 30 HP, 30% 30 of your maximum HP, and one action. Right? So basically, you get three to, two free actions, and you take some damage for it. That's perfect. That's fine. Uh, now, you have a lot of abilities that allow you to actually do double damage. Right? So double shot allows you to shoot twice. And killing with double uh, shot also will reduce the cooldown of Rampage by, by one turn, which is you know very good because there is a synergy in this tree. And so basically, we'll be playing with lowered cooldowns. It's a very, very useful ability overall. Uh, Bloodlust is kind of meh, but you may have to take it if you want to take double shot. This part of the tree is kind of weird. I don't like it at all. I mean, this is just flat damage bonuses, but it doesn't have any action economy here. Uh, I mean, assassination is okay, but it's just you have to kill one target and then you get cloak, and then again, like uh, hidden is removed if you shoot again. So it's kind of very, very situational, uh, and I don't really like it too much. You may consider taking quick cloak if you, you know, go in very often. So quick cloak is very useful then. Uh, other than that, we have this tree, which is very interesting because it's very different from all the others. Uh, so here you are mostly relying on the uh, proximity mine ability, which allows you to set additional kind of a mine. Um, and it's, it's kind of good if you uh, you know uh, if you plan well. And there are two abilities that allow you to basically uh, improve your grenade abilities, right? So you have the frag grenade mastery. Two cooldown reduction for grenades is amazing because uh, frag grenades is one of the most powerful abilities overall in the game. So you can just play around this and gain a lot of benefits. And then finally, quick swap. Um, if you kill with a shot, you reduce frag grenade throw ability by one turn, it also works with the proximity mine. So those are very, very strong abilities overall. Um, um, so I think this is uh, this is just a very, very powerful uh, setup. This one is kind of weird because you reduce the explosive damage uh, uh, for the units. So I don't think this is useful at all. Extended Cloak is good, by the way. And then we have Sapper, uh, which is also kind of mech. I would never go here. I would just take this straight up and maybe expand here. Especially that we have this ability here that allows you to hide an ally, right? So uh, you can tar you can basically use the concealment on an ally as well, which is obviously a very very strong skill. And then the sprint is actually just just this very long uh, movement for one action point, very useful as well. Okay, so I think this covers our scout, and I think we can move to the next uh, class now, which is going to be Vanguard. Vanguard is weird, <laughs> man. Vanguard is really weird. Uh, I get to say, I uh, I don't know what to think about Vanguards. So there is definitely the S tier for uh, Insane, which is the Shock Trooper. Uh, this uh, tree revolves around the Shouts, which disable your enemies, so you can remove enemies from cover. You can uh, also interrupt their, uh, their channeled um, Overwatch skill. And there is also some play around the Bayonet charge. So we have a lot of abilities related to Bayonet which are very nice at first, but then a lot of enemies gain the ability to counter by an charge in various fashions. So um, even though it looks like a strong skill, actually uh, by an a charge kind of falls off very hard later down uh, the line in the game. So I'm in two minds about this. I like this tree very much, but I would say it's kind of uh, weird. Now you have Warden, 
Warden is very nice because Warden actually is one of the abilities, like one of the ability trees that allows you to um, to basically mm, defend your allies efficiently, right? You can just uh, make an, a single target take you as its uh, uh, as its you know kill target, uh, and then basically you just taunt them and they follow you instead of you know killing one of your more va vulnerable allies, right? So it's a very nice ability. Um, overall, I think it's it's strong. There's like like a lot of potential, but at the same time, it's it's just a bit worse than the uh, utility of the shock trooper tree. Uh, and then we have warden, which is also okay because it has uh, like warden tree has uh, other than the taunt, it has also the uh, seventy five percent percent damage reduction against first attack each turn, which is very strong. Okay, so generally speaking, this would be the vanguard. Uh, I'm not gonna go in depth into the other ability trees actually because there isn't really much there. Uh, Leech is absolutely worthless because Leech is just worse than healing, and uh, so that's that's not gonna work. And assault relies on you having not max not maximum HP to deal more damage, which again sounds interesting, but it really isn't. So um, honestly, that I would just skip that as well. So we have this uh, Vanguard covered. I, I'm not gonna go in depth on uh, on the skills here. Because it's just what it says on the tin, right? You have like more shouts on the shock trooper tree, more defensive skills on the warden. Basically, whatever you find useful, you should pick. I would avoid paladin and I would avoid assault because they are just weaker abilities on the tree. Um, I, uh, well, yeah, okay. Um, and that's basically all uh, we have here for for the vanguard. And now finally, heavy. Heavy used to be uh, one of my favorite classes, but again, it's very situational, so it's not good for all missions. I think that for defend for holding points is just a very very strong class, and this is specifically because of the defender tree. Uh, but then you have the Demol demolitionist, which is also good for dealing with like large numbers of enemies, and then you have those two trees, specialist and, and artillery, which are generally speaking just very weak uh, compared to um, the other f two counterparts. Okay, so just have a look at defender first. So I'm gonna just jump to gears again and just show you those abilities in action. So we are just, we have to pick my heavy. Okay, here is my Thomas. Uh, and we have this ability here. Uh, so this tree has a lot to offer. It has the bonus, the Slayer, which means Overwatch shoots, shots deal 50% more damage. And also Quick Overwatch, which gives you an additional, uh, basically additional shot in the Overwatch mode uh, per turn. It's a very strong combo. So I think this is the main use of heavy. You just defend a point and you kill enemies who approach. You also have this ability here to suppressing fire. It's a very strong skill because even if it misses, it still disables your opponent. So even if you have like 10% chance to hit, you miss your shot, you can still make uh, your enemy immobile. So this is a very, very nice disable. Uh, it can kind of keep your enemy stuck in place and allow you to set up better, for instance. So I think this is a very, very strong skill. And this means basically the defender is the best. Demolitionist is, I think, second best because it has accuracy bonus for you and the allies. So it's a very, very strong skill overall. And then you have the explosive shot, which also means that you do AOE damage. So it allows you to clear up those weaker monsters very, very quickly. Right, so this means that heavy is very strong overall. However, at the same time, I would say that, you know, it's, it's just a bit uh, weaker um, than uh, sniper and then scout. So I've put it in B tier. Okay, I think this is it for my overview. I hope you kind of enjoyed the video more or less. Uh, if you have any comments, if you disagree with me, especially if you disagree with me, please let me know, okay? So I'm open to any criticism, and obviously this was just my own personal opinion. Uh, so thank you for watching. Remember, if you did enjoy the video, you can always subscribe, you can follow me uh, on Twitch as well, uh, and you know, this way you'll stay tuned for more content coming your way. Thanks for watching, see ya!